All right, my friends, you will notice that I've got everything on quick connects, even the high pressure side, and it just makes life so much easier. Just click her on. Good. And then you just run some water through it, as they say. Good. Now, the last time, you guys didn't see this, but the last time I started this uh, pressure washer up, it didn't stay running. It just went bleh, like four seconds. Let's try it again. <coughs> I am going to make it a little bit easier on it. No, still nothing. So that was not our problem. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. Hmm. Good day, my friends. Bruce here. Well, I've been promising for a while now to start doing some internal repairs of the pumps of uh, high pressure pumps, residential high pressure pumps, big difference because they're uh, they're not made to the level of let's say an industrial or a commercial pump. So let me just uh, show you what we got here. This is the one that came out of the uh, out of the tiny clip you just saw. It uh, what did it cycle 10 times and then stall. So I've, I took it apart, found out what I thought was wrong with it, and I put it back together again. And then I have a valve kit, which I'll show you right after we take this apart. So I just have to have to uh, get my act together, and I'll be right back. All right. So let's just take this pump apart. Uh, as you know, they, or you might not know, but anyway, they, they, the engines are like a lawnmower engine, but they have a flywheel. And this goes underneath, and then this is the hose that goes in here and this is the high pressure side that comes out here so we're going to turn it over we're going to just take it apart just like this uh, hopefully we can do it with this drill and we don't need the impact I don't want to use an impact on an aluminum pump and uh, we'll just loosen these three three bolts everything's in threes on these ones the bolts that hold it together the bolts that hold it to the frame the pistons inside, everything's triple. I think they do call them a triplex. But I'm not an expert. One, two, and three. Good. Oh, shoot. Okay, that's fine. That's that's great. So this is the this is the part of the pump that turns. And inside here is about, oh, I don't know, 200 milliliters of oil. I think 30 weight oil. Some of them are filled with others. And uh, these are the pistons, and they almost like a rotary engine. One goes, one lifts, one lifts, next one lifts, the next one lifts, the next one lifts, and it just rotates around like that. But it hangs down like that. Oop, that's all right. So I haven't cleaned anything yet, it's just the way it is. So here is the manifold, what I call the manifold. And uh, just let me get these little valves straightened around for you. Me. So there we go, that is the manifold. And in the manifold, you will find three valves. Now they look like this, but they should have a third section snapped on for a seal. So you'll see, we'll get it all out, and then we'll, uh, they might come out in pieces, but we'll reassemble them as I take them out, okay? So we'll just head back here, and you guys will get the whole picture. You can use a pair of needle nose to get these out, right? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's why. Uh, these rubber seals come off, and I just put them back over on the pump like that. So nothing is 
backwards or forwards. Like, you know, you turn them over as you do it because this goes like that. Oh, one more, right here. Okay. So now I'm gonna just push this down. Maybe we'll get we might be able to get the whole thing out in one in one shot. It, when the pump has never been taken apart before, these just pull out. No. I want to do one a full one for you. Okay, well we'll do it the hard way then. No, it didn't come. So let me just show you now. Maybe, baby. And the spring. There. I'll just put this back together. So this is how they come out. Oh, did you miss that? Oh, I'm so sorry. We'll do it again. I'll put that back in there. And we'll just take it out again. Start over. Kind of. All right. So you reach down in here with your needle nose and you pull this little valve out by its narrow end. Just like that. Now, when you do that, the rest of it comes with it. We'll just grab those, we'll just grab that. Because this has all been disassembled once, eh? There we go. Okay. So there's a, a piece, the spring, and the actual valve. And that bounces back and forth on there just like that. You see that? Doesn't that seem hokey? But we're missing something. So now, well, this is how you get the last of the seal out. I take the, the bolt that holds the uh, unit together, I think they're six mil. Don't quote me on that. Come on, baby. There we go. Not quite. Hmm. There. That is the rest of the valve. And what happens is, this snaps together like that. But they come apart. So that's how the valve is actually installed. And you can see it still has, has some springiness. So when you replace it, the new one will look like this. And it will just poke back in there and stay. Doesn't that seem hokey pokey flimsy? So let's get the other two out. This one has a spring, that's good. There's the whole thing. And we get the seal. If you look inside there, the seal is in this one right here. You can see the seal. And then the one I took out is empty. Right in there. So there should be a seal in that one. And there, that one is empty. And this one still has, has the valve in it. <clears throat> I'm just going to take this one out now. Don't forget, this has been done once before, so it's not as easy as the first time you do it. Huh. Put a little pressure on that baby. Almost. Come on, baby. Huh. Well, we might have to use a poker or something to get that out. Let's try a different bolt. Nope. There. So we're going to pull that out somehow. There it is. Okay. We'll put this one together. 
Now it's tempting to reuse these, but I ordered a new set. Now this last one is the interesting one. So there's the valve. There's the plastic. And we'll pull out the seal, or the base of the valve, or seal, or whatever you want. I don't know what they're called. Right, like that. But no spring. When I did this one, we didn't get a spring, right? So now, this is where, this is what I found in the pump. Something evil happened to that third. Okay, so that hole is different. That hole, oh, that hole is empty. That hole is empty. And this hole, look at that. The spring is still in there. The dirty dog, eh? And that's why I think the pump failed. It's coming out. Now the original spring, this, this was a this is a fake spring, came from a different setup. But that spring was actually laying. Pardon me, wait on stretched out sideways in there like that at the bottom of the hole so now those holes are empty one two and three so now you're up to where i was so i think what i'm going to do now is get some vinegar and clean out the scale out of the bottom of this thing <coughs> and we're going to install our new we're going to install our new valves and seals, which I bought. I bought a seal kit, or a valve kit, an Ubi River Berry, if that's how you say it. So that's how they come from the factory, and they don't look much different than when they came out of the pump, right? That's a used one, that's a new one. So I'll put this back in the new box. And I also ordered six seals. And these three seals will replace these guys right here. Simple, simple. And then inside the pump directions, I got this with a pump I ordered a long time ago, you can tell, is the torquing specs for the top head bolts. So that's it, my friends. That's all that there is to one of these. There's also the unloader, of course, which on this one I turned the unloader down so that I could uh, try and make it work. So it's gonna have to be adjusted once we get it together, right? I'm just gonna go get a little bit of vinegar and a, an old toothbrush and we're gonna clean this up. Cause there is some, there is some crud in there. I think he got some good hours out of what's here. That's kind of cool, eh? So there isn't really too much to these. Thanks a lot. All right, my friends, there's three more valves we have to get out. And this is on the, uh, the discharge side. One, two, and three. These just come out. Now there's a hokey looking uh, O-ring in here we have to be careful with. idea and the o-ring the oh the o-ring stayed on the bolt that's good the cap or whatever you want to call it excuse me so these haven't been out yet so now I'm just going to reach in with a pair of pliers and pull them out no nope, they're doing the same thing two three one, two, and three. They're identical to the other ones. They're, they're the same make, okay? 
and then we use the six millimeter bolt to pull them out. <coughs> Maybe. Well, no, it's not going to come. Okay, this should come out. I wonder if I can just pull it out with this. Nope. Well, let's just try something. There, see? Piece of cake! Went too far. Had too much leverage. This is real world here. No rehearsal on this one. There's that. Now I've got rubber O ring goes on there. And one more. And I'm going to clean this with vinegar or CLR or some type of a household cleaner just to get the. There's some deposits on it, eh? There we go. So that's, I guess we should put these together just because. Just to keep things together. There. So those are the same as the other three. Good. Well, that was good. Now we're going to clean this up with a CLR and a toothbrush and some water. Just because. A little bit of CLR. That's too much. <laughs> And some water. Okay. Now let's we'll see if we can get rid of some of this corrosion in here. Oh, that's working good. I was wondering, I was laying there, you know, you go to bed at night, and I was laying there wondering how on earth I'm going to get this part cleaned out. And I think this is going to work just good. Oops. And then a good rinse of water, of course. So this is like a lather, rinse, repeat, literally. So I'll be back in a bit, guys. Okay, that was only about a minute. I'm just gonna rinse this now. This is just water. I'm going to use a little air and squirt in there. Watch out! We'll do it over here. I think one more rinse is in order.
It looks a lot better. That's amazing. It's like getting the plaque off your teeth. Okay, one more of this. Management. Hello, this must be management. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Good. Um, yes, I am good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the roast is about a two hour roast, so. Perfect. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Oh. <laughs> All right, my friends, it's the next day. And we're gonna put this pump together. There isn't much actually to do. I'm just checking out some of the seals on these, these O-rings on some of these plugs. It looks like they had hard water out where uh, this guy had this pump. This is the pump from that motor that just went but it stalled and the pump wouldn't turn once it was engaged i am going to make it a little bit easier on it no still nothing so now we are going to do this we got six new valves it says in the instructions we might as well do these ones first because that was the instructions to put them in with all in one piece like this I went online, there's a good website, I'll give you the link. And he said with a, a socket like this, I'm doing the exact same thing they did, push these down till they seat. That's it, man, that is just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they must hold themselves in there. One, two, three. And we put these on. Now these might leak. If they leak, I will replace them. I've got a, I have a seal kit. But I don't even know if this is going to work yet. And it said to uh, torque them to about 219 inch pounds or some crazy thing. So we'll do that. Come on, come on, baby. Good. Socket. Fourteen silly meters. And uh, I'm gonna get my little torque wrench. I wonder if it goes to two hundred and something. That goes to 200, so that'll do. I mean, well, this isn't, this cap, the cap is not rocket science. A sleeve or a bearing would be. Okay, 200, zero. Let's go to, let's just crank her up to 210 if we can do that. 
and we'll take the Not very tight. Good. Now the same thing with these little guys. But we don't have to torque anything except the end bolts. One. Isn't that something? That just looks so, so, just too easy. And then we take three new seals. Now in the video that was provided by AR, they actually showed them putting them back in upside down, but they showed them taking them out like this. So that means they would have to go on like that. <coughs> oh. Said to put them in at a bit of an angle. Okay, use the four spruce. Okay, and number three. So I'm putting them in V side down. But the but the piston goes back and forth either way, right? I'm getting hot. I gotta take my vest off. Okay. Now these guys, they're just simple as can be. They go on one, two. And three, I just think that they were designed to leak if there's any leaks. And then this goes on here like that. I think, let's just, you know, the pistons look really clean, you know. Oh, let's just put a little bit of oil on those. Oh, that's primer. A little bit of gas in there. And I forget, I might have to go into the house to check, see what these are torqued at. Now, there's three different orientations. You got to make sure that uh, the, there's a close one at the top. And I think that is it right there. You just have to check out the orientation, right? Okay, there's the top piston there. And I think goes like that. Yep. And then we just put these three in and torque them. And I'm going to, might not say in the book here. Might. Give me just a second guys. Oh, 221 inch pounds. 19 foot pounds. Good. I'm going to go with foot pounds. So I'll be right back. Alrighty. Where's my hat? Can't think without a hat. Okay, so these are going to be 19 foot pounds or 221 inch pounds. So I'm going to experiment with my uh, with my uh, two different torque wrenches here. See how close we are. If 
I should, it's a fairly light torque. I think I can do it just by holding it. Okay, you with me? We'll tighten each one up a little bit and then we'll go for the clicks later. Too much movement. Might have to just stick it in the vise here. One leg maybe. I don't know, I don't like that, but it is fairly strong stuff. <clears throat> just to keep it from twisting. Okay. I gotta be that's starting to feel kinda tight. Foot pounds. Nineteen. I'm not hearing a click. Move from one to the other. No. That's got to be close. Let's do the other one here. Good then, took a little more. I was real close with the other one. Okay. So we're there, you heard the click. Good, one. Oh, I'm struggling with that. I guess I better get some sockets with some Allen keys for small stuff. I have the... Uh, non-metric ones one two this one's been stretched a bit three All right. so thanks for watching this little gong show see you later all right i just checked the oil in the pump and it's going to hang upside, well not upside down, it hangs like this, right? So I just took this brass bolt out and the oil is right there and it says in the manual to not add oil if it doesn't need oil. I don't know. I've changed them before. I use SAE 30 weight no detergent. And I've had luck with that. Now some of them have gear oil but you can smell it right away. going to use this torque wrench to get a little bit more leverage. Perfect. We are ready to mount this pump onto that mo uh, mule engine, I call it. But I'm going to just go into the house and check to make sure how much 221 inch pounds is. Because I think the book has a misprint. I'll be right back. All right, my friends. I checked online and uh, 221 inch pounds is about 18.4 foot pounds or somewhere in there. So 18 to 19 is good. And I did check my two ratchets and they're close. This one's a little shorter so it feels like you have to push harder. And I just did it in the vise here. Nothing scientific, just how it feels, right? So there we go. That is set at uh, two, oh, just over 200. Just a nice gentle nudge. And then this is a longer one. So it's about the same. And I always take the spring, the tension off my spring when I'm doing this. I'm crazy, I know. Hello, my friends. We're back. There's one more thing on this pump I want to check. So I'm going to take the unloader off. Maybe. <laughs> this way and I'm gonna 
just pull toward the arm here. There we go. I'm using a crescent wrench because pumps have different sizes of bolts on every single connector. Okay, we're going to take the unloader out. You've seen this before, and if not, I'll show it to you right now. So there is the cover. The spring with a cap that goes in there. There should be another cap on either end of the spring, right? Very simple. And then we'll just take the cover off now. The second cover. on there. And that's a little big and this one's a, probably a little small. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Oh, I don't want to snap that off. Oh. Did I do that? Okay, I gotta start following the torque specs. Or I don't know my own strength, eh? <clears throat> okay, this is the rest of the unloader. And that's a 21 millimeter. So this is the unloader. This is what the whole key of the whole thing is, right? And it should pop in and it should pop out just like that. That's all it is. But I was reading online that there's a seat in there that we can pull. And it's a five millimeter seat, but it doesn't look plugged. So I think I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to this is supposed to, th oh, let's go six mil then. <laughs> there we go. I wonder if I can pull that easily. Nope. Nothing's easy when it comes to pumps, man. I want that, I want to take that out. Leverage, folks. It's all about leverage. This should just pull out. There it comes. Good. Now I can say I have totally, I have totally taken a pump apart. And this seat sits in there like that. Easy peasy. And there's nothing wrong with it. Good. Well, I am now just going to get some silicone. That seal looks okay. It's clean. And I'm just going to put this back together again. Now this isn't silicone like you take out a silicone tube to fix a leak on a window or something. This is this is tap silicone. I call it silicone. Good. And we're just gonna tap that back in there. And oh, and it goes in the seal that's closer to this end goes in first. I don't know how far it should go. 
felt it, I felt it seat. One more tap, eh? You know me. Good. That's nice because it doesn't wreck the seat, eh? Isn't that a great idea? Okay, so now. A little tiny bit of oil isn't going to hurt anybody. I've had this, uh, I've had this unloader out before. Good. Now we'll just tighten it up a little bit. And that's about it. Now, we got to get this right. This goes in the, the spring, I believe, because I've had this apart too many times. The spring has a little brass cap on each end with the little uh, titty sticking either side there. So I think I can just take this, drop this down in here, right? I'm going to stick a little bit of, of this good stuff in here. And then this goes on top of there like that. And then this goes back on top of there just like that. There, we got the right wrench too. Just takes a little bit of fiddling, eh? There, now that is seated. I'm just going to tighten it a t tiny bit more. And that's it. I think this pump is ready to use. I wouldn't mind having another look in here. I had a look in here a long time ago that looks like it might be a 14 or less. <clears throat> there it is. Ratchet. My favorite Sears teardrop ratchet teardrop because they don't make them anymore. Are you guys following me? You are. You is. I don't remember what was in here. Probably a spring and a ball. A ball? I don't see a spring. I'm kind of nervous. I don't see a spring, you guys. I'm gonna go back online and check this. Mm. Although this, I think the spring's behind it because this really pushes on there. Magnet, have I got a little magnet to get that out of there? I don't know if I've got anything that small. Might come. Yep, there's the spring. was there okay guys the spring is there I thought I dropped it but it would never it never came out of the hole so let's just make sure it's in there all the way Okay, and it really hardly does the thing, eh? That's great. I feel good about that now. I think this pump's going to work. I've had everything off but the soap inlet. Let's just do that right now. says that's part of the easy start but I don't quite believe that <clears throat> okay what size is this this looks like a 10 or 11 or 12 <clears throat> just look inside the soap the soap 
Acceptor Do Hummer. Oh, it's a 10. Yeah, no. I know, for you young guys, you don't even know what that is, but that's Jed Clampett, man. The Beverly Hillbillies. Ooh, I'm not happy with the way that's looking. It's looking kind of icky picky, isn't it? Ooh, that, ooh, I'm glad I cleaned this out. It's filthy. We might have to go back and get our CLR. I guess it's naturally filthy because it's soap goose going in there, eh? Put this over here. Hey, I know what I can use. A little drip of water. A lot of guys don't even use these soap dispensers, eh? You know what? A little teeny drill bit will clean that out. That might be too big. Oh no, it's perfect. One more bigger. One more bigger. Is that good English? Good. Now, I'm just going to take a shot of air. Where'd that go? Did I get you in the face? That'll do. <clears throat> okay. Except for maybe potentially a leak. I don't see what could be, I don't see anything that could happen as to why this pump would not work. Boy, I'm losing. It's easy to lose those little springs, isn't it? <laughs> Holy. Okay. There it is. <laughs> and I'm just going to pour a little water on that now. Holy smokes, this thing is a sensitive little guy, eh? All right, now there was some kind of a sealant on there, but I think it'll be all right, just like that. Good. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket. There. There's a spring. Everything belongs everywhere. There's, okay, that's been cleaned, that's been cleaned, and that's been cleaned. These have been replaced, and the three valves underneath here have been replaced. And the only thing I could really use is a screen on the input, right? To keep the... What happens is, what kills these pumps a lot of the times is a... Uh, stuff breaks off the inside of the hose, and then you get pieces of hose going through the pump. So, uh, I'm going to just go look and see if I've got a screen. So even a piece of rubber like that. Right, see? That'll go through the pump. Okay, so the next thing is, this is uh, over here on the uh, cart, is my mule motor, we'll call it. And it's the motor that I use to test pumps with. If I don't have a, 
an existing motor. So that's kind of a nice thing to have. I'm just going to take the bolts out so I can mount this pump right here. This one we just fixed. Because this is the one that I actually repaired the, or took out the <sighs> unloader and cleaned it on the first video of the of the uh, pressure washer that just stalled. It wouldn't turn 10 turns. I am going to make it a little bit easier on it. No, still nothing. So everything's been cleaned in here. <clears throat> and I adjusted the, this unloader to where there was no nail polish or red paint or whatever they use there. So that's good. Okay, my friends. Give it a go. That's my first successful pump rebuild. I wouldn't mind turning up the pressure just a little bit, but that little Allen key is behind the wall on the cart. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'll get to that. Be right back. I've got everything primed, and what I didn't have last time you saw this setup was I didn't, I didn't adjust the unloader for a higher pressure. I'd like to see just a little bit more. You want to start her up? Choke! Throttle! Ooh, knees! I guess I'll show you what I did. <clears throat> I, I turned it up three quarters of a turn before I even brought it out. So right, right there, I loosened that 10 millimeter nut on the end of the I guess I could turn it sideways a little bit. Right there, I loosened that 10 millimeter nut and then I used the Allen key on the end of the bolt and turned it in to get increased pressure. Some of them you turn the other way, it depends on how they're made. But this one I turned in just so that I got a good recoil on the, on the gun when I pulled the trigger. Right 
There, that's the nut and that's the bolt. Thanks. Too funny. Okay, we're gonna just do one short demo on this one. Right off the ground here. Because I'm using a different hose. So really all I know what I need is a, um, a gauge for the end to see what the pressure is running at at the end on the hose there. But I call that a win. I got the pressure turned up. So there's just a nice recoil. But not as much as my other big one. I'll show you that in just a second. And so then we're done. Off to the next job.